Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this New Camp 320 Clamshell Edition. So to get you started, getting hooked up to your tow vehicle, you're gonna ride on a two inch ball. Uh, to Once you get this lower down on your ball, all you've gotta do is pick up on this and slide it forward. Make sure that these two ears here fall down into those cavities and that's gonna get you latched on. When you get ready to release, it's just gonna be the opposite pick up on the latch and pull up and back and that's going to get you released from the ball. Uh, we're going to use your manual crank tongue jack here to run the tongue of the trailer up and down. It's just a simple cranking up and down. When you get ready to tow, make sure your wheel is removed for uh, travel or it will probably not be there when you get there to remove it. All you've got to do is pull this pin right here and pull the wheel off. To finish your hookup to your tow vehicle, we're going to have safety chains that need to be crossed and then secured to your receiver hitch uh, with the S hooks there. And then we've got your safety breakaway cable for your electric brakes. If for some reason you do get detached from your tow vehicle, this is designed to yank out of your breakaway box in here and apply the brakes on the trailer to bring the trailer to a stop. And last but not least to get you hooked up is gonna be your seven way cord that's gonna be plugged in on your tow vehicle. And this is gonna provide all of your running lights, turn signals, and uh, control electric brakes if your uh, tow vehicle is equipped with a brake controller. So moving back from there, inside our cover here is gonna be our propane and battery. So as you can see in here, propane's on the left, battery's on the right. First things first, if you need to remove your propane cylinder for service, uh, just close off your service valve move your gas line and then you'll have to undo this little pinch bolt that's right here it's just a wing nut on the end all you've got to do is loosen that up to where you can get the cylinder out and there you go now this is just a standard 20 pound propane cylinder same thing that's on a lot of barbecue grills out there so you can take this and exchange it at an exchange place or get it refilled, uh, whichever suits you best or whichever you may need to do. Uh, to put it back in, it's just gonna be the opposite. Pick it up. Make sure everything's out of the way. Drop it back into the clamping ring. Put your gas hose back on. Turn your service valve back on and tighten up your pinch bolt. And that's going to be secured. You don't need to over tighten that clamp. It is designed to be done by hand, so you don't need tools uh, to get that in and out. And then you'll be ready to go on with your uh, LP gas. Uh, to get to your battery, you just have to undo your battery strap here. Just unclip it. The strap will fall off if you let it, so just kind of dangle it off to the side. And then the lid is called a snap top lid. It's got a couple of snaps on it. So these ears right here on each side have to be kind of released from these grooves on each side. And inside you're gonna find a uh, lead acid battery, or you can upgrade this to AGM or lithium if you do that type of camping. You're also gonna find two 30 amp fuses one of these is gonna run off to your solar port on the side of the trailer, and the other one's gonna to run to the main power supply to the trailer. So a good place to check if for some reason your uh, 12 volts not working in the trailer, and uh, you know, check your fuses. Also, if you do not have a maintenance-free battery in here, you do need to pop these caps periodically uh, and check your water level and top it off with distilled water as needed. Put your cover back on, just line everything up. These two big cavities on the side are designed to have the cables pass through them. So you just gotta kinda get everything lined up in here. And push your lid on. Once you get there, you can reroute your strap um, and rebuckle it.
Clint, help a brother out. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> I'm going to put circus music to this. Oh, I can tell already. Speed it up. Do, 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 do. Put a picture of a monkey with a football. And I'm going to put a little splash 10 hours later. Yeah. And of course, I put it on there backwards. Oh, well. You would be an RV tech if you did. Yep. Okay. Also inside this compartment, we have your battery disconnect switch is going to be mounted to the front wall of the trailer here. It's going to be this uh, turn switch right here. On the top, you have green indicating on and on the side when it's turned to the off position, it's going to be red. So when you're going to be putting this thing in storage, turn that off. It's going to preserve your battery. Uh, so it won't be dead, hopefully, when it comes out of storage, as well as extend the life of the battery. To use it, just turn it back to green, should be good to go. And this tube that's right here in the front is designed to store a short sewer hose. Uh, most of your premium hoses are not going to fit in there. Most of our customers end up using it for something else uh, to, you know, store and then find another way to do a sewer hose. So to get this thing to latch back down, all we're going to do is close this down. Give that a little jiggle there to make sure it latches in and you're good to go. Moving over here just to the side of our uh, propane cover. This plug right here is going to be your solar charge port for a portable solar panel. Uh, if you wanted to um, hook up to a portable panel, all you got to do is plug it in right there and you're good to go. Just below that, we're going to have our sewer dump. We're going to have our uh, gray water and our black water. So to get everything hooked up, all you got to do is take this cap off. Hook your sewer hose onto the bayonet fitting. We always recommend start by dumping your black water, which is going to be your toilet water. It's going to be your big valve here. Pull that out, let it dump. When it's finished, close it off. Follow it with your gray water, and that's going to help rinse your hose out. Um, other than that, that's pretty, pretty much it for your dump station. Not a whole lot to it. Um, on all four corners of this trailer, you're going to have stabilizer jacks. These are not for lifting the trailer. They are just for stabilizing. Um, it does come with your crank handle here. And New Camp provides a long crank handle for this one because of the rear jack uh, position. Kind of makes it a lot easier to get on them. But it's very simple, up and down. Um, when you get level on the trailer, all you're going to do is run these to the ground and, and put a little bit of pressure on them. It's just going to help stabilize the trailer, all four corners. Okay, moving over to the off-door side of the trailer. Uh, this little antenna up here, it's going to be your radio antenna. Um, doesn't really bring up any TV. So it is recommended if you're going to want to watch over the air channels to get some type of TV that can go, or I'm sorry, excuse me, antenna that can go in the window or something external that you can hook up right here if you wanted to do it from the outside. Uh, you just pop that cap open and you inside you've got a coax hookup, antenna, satellite, or cable. Just below that's going to be our uh, plumbing vent. It's going to be for our black tank. And then we've got our fresh water fill right down here. Easiest way I found to get these doors open says push to open. Just give it a little bit of a pop and that helps open it, gets it open to fill that up. Uh, put your water hose in there, turn it on until it gushes back out at you. And that's gonna tell you that your tank, your fresh water tank is full. And I will show you once we get inside the trailer how to get the water out of the fresh water tank for use through your faucets. Okay. Moving back from there, we've got your 30 amp service cord. Very simple process here on how to use this thing. You can see here we've got our three prongs. Uh, one of them is going to be L shaped. On the trailer side, we've got the same corresponding. And all you've got to do is match up your two L's, put them on there, give it a little twist, and then lock it down with your lock ring to help keep everything secured. Follow that warning label there. That does tell you what is the power requirement for this trailer. Uh, moving back from there, we've got your Alda exhaust for your water heater and heater for the trailer uh, boiler type system that does a great job of heating everything. So when you are using it on the gas mode, this is where your exhaust is going to come out so you can get some hot air coming out of here. So don't block this cover, put anything over it. Um, you want everything flowing good. While we're down here talking about wheels and tires on the trailer, um, all of your tires have a recommended tire pressure from New Camp or your trailer manufacturer. Follow those. 
And then on your lug nuts, they do need to be checked and torqued periodically. Um, after your first trip, uh, we recommend checking them every time before you hit the road just to make sure everything's good and tight. Moving back from there, we've got uh, your, uh, your sink vent. So for the clamshell sink, this is where the, the P-trap vents. Below that, we've got your city water connection. To get into this, just pop the cap off. This is where you're gonna hook right up with your water hose to your uh, city water connection through, and then you also need to be running a water pressure regulator per new camp, no more than 50 PSI into this unit. Uh, you are provided with a water pressure regulator to keep that down. Just back from there, we've got your outside shower. To use this guy, very simple. Just pull your shower head out. Uh, to use this, select your temperature, hot or cold, or mix it, however you want to use it. <clears throat> Take your little lever, push your lever down. That's going to allow the water to come out of the faucet. When you're done using it, all you've got to do is push back on that uh, lever there, and that's going to release it. And then to store it, just feed your hose back in. Store the head, and then you can close it. Now, do not forget to turn the hot and cold knobs off on this. It can cause some hot water mixing issues and you may end up with lukewarm water. Another good thing is, is don't forget to winterize it when you do your winterization outside showers, number one freeze point. All right, moving back into your clamshell area. First things first to get into this thing, we've got your uh, lockable latches that turn, just quarter turn to get you into them. And this thing is, has struts on each side. So once you get it going, it's gonna lift on its own. So don't get hit in the face when it takes off. Uh, once we get in here, we've got your uh, light right up here, just has a push button on it on and off. And on your uh, strut over here, there is an electric, uh, electric control. This is an electric shutoff for the gas for the cooktop. So tr make sure those wires back in here, there are some wires coming to it. Make sure those don't get cut or anything like that while you're back here doing anything so that safety device can stay in place. Um, got plenty of storage back here, a couple cabinets. These actually pass all the way through to the inside of the trailer, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got a charging station, 12 volt, and then two USB ports for charging. We've got a 110 outlet, and then we have your television. So yeah, there you go, Jensen TV. I don't think this thing pulls from the wall, does it? Uh, we've got your audio speakers up in both corners and coming down to the kitchen on your faucet for control of the water is going to be your lever here. So back and forth is going to be temperature control. You can see here we've got blue and red and then in and out this way is going to be for uh, water flow. So temperatures back and forth and flow is in and out. Your cooktop. To get this thing lit, you will need a stick lighter or a match or something of those sorts. To get it lit, all you have to do is turn your knob to where it says light, push and hold the button, get your flame established with a lighter or match. Once it gets going, hold the button down for about another 10 seconds. When you release it, the flame should stay lit and you're ready to go. And that works for both burners. Okay, so under the sink in the tab clamshell model, we've got all your winterizing and bypass valves. So let me show you how those need to be set for normal use and winterizing use. So in normal mode, we're gonna have these two open as such. This one's gonna be closed. As you can see, it is here. This will stay down. This one should be closed as it is. This one should be closed as it is. And then this one over here is gonna be open as it is. So to winterize, all we're gonna do is we're gonna close this one. We open this one. We would open this one, open this one, and close these two. And then you're gonna be ready to be completing your winterization. That's pretty much it. Um, New Camp does offer some other information on how to winterize their tab products on their website. So check that out if you have any questions um, or give us a shout and we can walk you through it. All right, moving on in the kitchen, uh, your unit does come with the tab sink cover slash 
cutting board or space saver there. Uh, we've got you a storage drawer and a cabinet, and then we've got your Norcoal refrigerator. So this thing does a good job, just has a control knob back in the back, um, zero being your off position and five being your coldest, and you can adjust your temperature anywhere there in between. Uh, underneath, your spare tire is going to be mounted right here and it'll be bolted on with two lug nuts that you just have to remove to get the uh, spare tire off if you do need to use it. Moving over to the on door or the door side of the trailer, starting right here, this mount right here is gonna be so you can remove move your lagoon table from the inside of the trailer to the outside and allow you to have some extra table space out here if you so choose. Uh, right next to that, we've got your exterior 110 outlets. Again, your wheel and tire, same maintenance as the other wheel and tire. For your entry door step, very simple process to get it to deploy. Just grab it and give it a little tug and it's gonna pop out to stow it for travel. Just kind of pick up on the face of it and then give it a little push and it's gonna go right in. While we are under here, let me show you how to drain your fresh water tank. So when you're going to be getting ready to go into storage or just going to be putting it away for a while and you've been carrying water on board, you're just going to turn this valve right here and that's going to allow that tank to drain on out of there. Last but not least, I think on the outside of the trailer is going to be how to get your door to stay in the open position. Um, once you get the door open, all you got to do is we're going to take these two pieces and get them to pop into each other. Just give it a little push. You'll hear a little pop and that's gonna have your door latched into place to keep it open. Uh, to release it, just give it a little tug. It's gonna come right back and you're good to go. So that should cover the outside of your clamshell tab 320. So let's go inside and check it out. All right guys, so coming to the inside of our tab 320 clamshell model, uh, pretty much all the tabs come with this. It's gonna be your screen door, it's the entry door. All you gotta do is pull it across and voila, screen door. And to get, out, get it closed, just push it back. So uh, coming in just inside your door up top here, we're gonna find your two main switches. One's for the porch light, which is the amber porch light outside. The other one's gonna be for the ceiling light, which is this main light that's right here overhead when you come in. Um, doing anything else in here, we've got plenty of cabinet storage, drawer storage in here to get these open. All you gotta do is give, a, give that little button a push, it's gonna pop out which is then gonna allow you to open the drawers. Um, each and every one of these does open and have plenty of storage in them. Under your cabinets here, we do have more storage, so lots of it in this trailer. Moving over here to do your windows. So all three of your windows in here operate the same way. Um, they all have the turn latches. So, and they all have the lockable ones at the bottom, which means they just have a push button. So you just have to push the button to get the bottom two to rotate. And then the other two just turn and then just give it a little push. Um, you do have to tighten down on these knobs once you find your desired window position to keep them out. Whenever you get ready to close it, I recommend giving the window a little bit of a brace. That way it doesn't just slam shut on you. And each of these windows has a vent position uh, where you can latch it in a different spot to kind of give you just a breeze. So as you can see on the receivers here, they have another groove that's kind of in the middle. So if you just turn these latches to that center position, it's going to give you just a little bit of ventilation here. Uh, if you've got the vent, on, vent fan on and if it's raining outside, uh, that's going to be a big help to um, so you don't get water in. Other than that, you just close them down for normal travel. Do make sure you get all four latches complete, uh, completely latched for travel so you don't have any issues with wind or anything like that. All your shades operate the same way uh, in here as well. So the shade that comes from the top is going to be your day shade or kind of your bug screen type material. It's going to allow a lot of light through, a lot of air through it, um, and, and be good ventilation if you have the window open. Uh, the other shade to go the other way, this is going to be your nightshade. It's kind of a thicker material. It's darkening. 
so nobody's gonna be able to see in and it's gonna help keep any kind of camping light or anything like that out so it's kind of dark in here for you when you get ready to go to sleep now this little latch right here that keeps the two shades together is just a clip um, to get these to release just give it a little tug it doesn't take much and then you can separate your shades back down uh, to use your lighting strip that's up here just has a little push button on the end uh, that does glow in the dark um, if it gets some light on it, it kind of recharges the button the uh, it's, it's got a two-stage light on it so dim and then we've got a bright mode we have a 110 outlet under here as well for plugging in whatever you would like to coffee pot anything like that to use your monitor panel we just have to push these buttons here to check water levels or your battery we've got battery fresh black and gray and then your LED will correspond to how full each thing is and then we've got your water pump switch over here on the end so if you're going to be dry camping or traveling with water on board to use the restroom or anything like that you can just flip that on your water pumps going to come on and pressurize the system and you're going to have water throughout the trailer as long as you have water in the fresh water tank moving up from there we do have your jensen radio this is going to be for doing dvds uh, you can stream pair bluetooth pair your phone to it to uh, stream music it's got a usb charge port on it. it's got auxiliary jack for audio plus it's got am fm it's got all the goodies in it, it does everything you need it to do uh, next to that, we do have a couple storage cabinets up top. And that pretty much covers the front area of your trailer. It's so moving into the bathroom. Uh, it's a pretty cramped area. That's probably not good to say in a video. <laughs> so moving into the bathroom. Uh, to, it's just a basic bathroom to do stuff with. So we've got your shower head. That does have a flow control on it, which is going to be the lever right below the shower head there uh, that you can push to change your shower uh, water flow because you are limited on hot water and all that good stuff. Moving down from there, we do have your porthole window to use that uh, shade. All you have to do is rotate the cover and that will give you uh, some privacy while you're in here. Then we've got your hot and cold knobs. And this does have a diverter on it, so that's going to be this little lever right here. So if you want to use the shower, you just get your water going and then pull up on your diverter, and that'll divert water to your shower head. To use your toilet, it's just going to be a hand flush that's back here on the corner. So if you pull that halfway, that's just going to put water in the bowl. If you go all the way, it's going to open the blade valve and dump everything down. Um, and that's pretty much it to the toilet. Just make sure you're using chemical in the black tank as normal. Uh, back inside here in this compartment, we've got your water pump and some other service items. Uh, don't store anything in here. This is more of a service area than it is um, for, you know, access or whatever. Underneath your, underneath your faucet, we do have your toilet paper holder. You can see it goes in there. It is a... Uh, watertight area so you can keep your toilet paper nice and dry while you're showering in there. To use the light overhead in the shower, it's just going to be the push it's going to be the push button same as the uh, light in the clamshell area. Now your shower door is held closed with a magnetic strip while you're using the shower, so it gives it a little bit of a, a tension on it. Now whenever you get ready to travel, you do want to make sure you secure it with the travel knob. That way that shower door doesn't bounce open and bang against your cabinet and shatter or anything like that. Moving around from there, uh, let's just talk about your vent fan up top real quick. So we do have a lock knob on here. This is for travel. It's going to help keep the lid shut and secured. When you get ready to open it, just first things first, unlock it. And then you can crank your lid up. And you can set this to whatever height, um, you know, that you're comfortable with. Choose your flow direction for the fan, whether you want air in or out, and then set your fan speed, and you're going to be good to go. Pretty basic operation on that. Now, this little thing right here, uh, if for some reason your vent fan's not working, that is a uh, glass fuse. All you gotta do is take that out, check it, make sure it's good, and replace it if necessary. Moving over to the wall by the TV, 
We've got another Jensen television. That is secured with a bungee cord there to the wall. So you can pull this out and you can turn it to see, you know, depending on where you're sitting and be comfortable. Got all your connections here on the back that you would expect to see on a modern TV today. Um, and then just above that, we've got a couple of control panels. The one on the left is going to be the Air 8. That's going to be for your air condition control for this camper. Um, look for our other video on how to work this thing, but basic operation, um, all touchscreen, center button there is going to be your power button. This is going to be your fan speed button right here. And then these two are your temperature settings. And then this little icon right here, so we can cycle through our modes. So if you get, so this is going to be fan only. This is going to be like a kind of a dehumidifier mode. And then this is going to be cool mode. You can see we've got a snowflake there. So that's going to get everything going. And then, you know, like I said, you can adjust your fan speed low, medium, or high. And then this is like a recirculate mode here when this thing is on. Kind of the same thing as your car. You can see up here your cabin temperature. And then you can see if you go and touch your temperature buttons, that's going to be what your you're trying to achieve which right now it says 64 but the cabin temperature is 81 degrees so the air 8 uh, control here has a lot of other features to it um, like I said look for another video on that when we get that one uh, released for y'all to watch okay so on your Alda control once you get it turned on and powered up you can push the menu button here that's going to get you into your main control screen so starting up at the top obviously we've got our house with the little temperature in it and then we can use our positive and negative to set what temperature we want it to be in here. So this is going to be your heat control. If you don't want the heat on, turn that thing all the way down. Just leave it at the bottom. And that's going to be very helpful in keeping things down. So this is going to be shower control. What this is going to do, if you kick this thing all the way up to high, um, it's going to give you some additional hot water to use so you don't run out as fast as if you've got back-to-back -back showers. Uh, this one here is going to be for your electrical control. So if you want to use your 110 heating, uh, it's got two modes. It's got a one kilowatt and a two kilowatt mode. Uh, if you're going to run in the two kilowatt mode, just make sure you have the uh, proper power requirements for that, uh, which I will cover in the uh, all the video as well. And then our other control feature is going to be to run it on gas. If you want to run it on gas, just turn it on and it's going to heat up and take care of everything for you. And that's just the basic operations. There is a lot more that this can do. And like I said, look for our other video and I will cover that stuff. Okay, so on this tab, uh, we've installed a GoPower solar system. So let me show you how to use the control panel. Got a couple of buttons on here. The first one says AC. Uh, the one next to it says max boost. And then we've got your AB buttons. So the AC button, if you had a uh, inverter installed on here, this could be actually used to turn the inverter on, on and off. The max boost is going to be a boost control. So if it's coming down to the end of the day, you know you're going to really need to pump some energy into your batteries. Uh, you can activate the boost mode, and that's going to boost the charge rate into the battery. Uh, a mode doesn't really do anything just off the basic screen. B, mo B mode is going to, or the B button is going to be how you cycle through your uh, charge state, your amp hours, your uh, battery voltage, and all of that good information. So this does it also has a USB port on it on the side over here. You pop this little cover out of it. Uh, so you can use that for charging just as any other USB port. And then this also has Bluetooth connectivity through an app. So to, to turn the Bluetooth on to kind of get things going to pair it, you push and hold the A and B buttons together for three seconds. And that's going to see, you can see there, it's got the Bluetooth emblem flashing on the screen now. And you should be able to pair that up in the app if you had it. The other thing that you're going to have is to choose your different battery profiles, uh, whether it be flooded, um, uh, lithium, uh, sealed, which is going to be gel or AGM batteries. So to cycle through your battery profiles, you're going to push and hold the B button for three seconds. Once your battery profile starts flashing, then you can use the B button again to cycle through. So LFP is gonna be uh, LifePo, uh, which is gonna be lithium. 
sealed is going to be like a gel battery. AGMs are uh, also sealed but still lead acid. And then we've got flooded, which is what's equipped on this trailer. Once you choose your profile, push and hold the A button for three seconds and it'll go back to basic screen and it'll all quit flashing and you know that you're on the proper profile for your battery. And that's pretty much just the basics on the uh, Go Power charge controller for a solar system. Uh, refer to the owner's manual for any kind of other failure codes or anything else that you may get off of it. So just behind the cabinet over here where the TV is, you're gonna find your smoke alarm. Uh, this is a nine volt smoke alarm. Basic nine volt battery gonna be inside. Uh, so test it, replace the battery as needed, make sure everything's working there as it should. So moving down under the bench, uh, we've got a couple things over here. First is going to be our COLP alarm here. Uh, again, it's got a test button on it, test it periodically. And it's got a couple lights on it and some instructions for types of beeps it may make. If it does detect a leak, it's going to go off. It's going to alert you to evacuate the trailer. Moving next to it is going to be our WFCO uh, power distribution panel and here we're going to have your 110 breakers and your 12 volt fuses this is going to be all your main uh, power distribution to everything in the trailer whether it be 110 or 12 volt if you're having some type of power issue check here make sure everything is as it should be all your breakers on and none of your fuses blown if you do need a replacement fuse it's just a standard blade fuse that you can purchase pretty much anywhere or an automotive store, or a hardware store, or anything like that, you should be able to get your hands on those. Moving next to that, we're going to have your GFCI outlet. Uh, so this has uh, two buttons on it. The red one's going to be your trip button, and you'll see that red light comes on. If you see this outlet in that state, that means that no power is getting through this outlet or to any other outlet in the trailer. To reset it, just push the white button. The light should stay off, and you should be good to go. Other than that, you'll see you've got some venting here. Uh, we've got some grooves down around the bottom of the uh, bench seating here. It's gonna be for the heater ventilation. You can kind of see behind this here, uh, some coils. So that's gonna be for the Alda heater system. Uh, so your radiant heat's gonna come out through there. Uh, these other ports, there's a little black one above the TV. Uh, there's another little black one below the bench, uh, a couple of them below the benches. Those are gonna be for your Air 8 air conditioner. And that's going to be where your air comes from for that. Um, in the back of the trailer, a couple cabinets. Like I said, these do pass through to the outside area all the way through. Except for the one here on the end because that's going to be the back end of the TV. You've got lights in each corner uh, with just a little switch on them, just on and off. And just below that, we've got your uh, charging station for inside. Another 12 volt with two USBs for charging. Another 110 outlet to plug whatever in. And then we've got your lagoon table. Now this thing's pretty cool. Um, it can be moved around. It does have all these lock levers to keep things stationary, keep things from moving. So this table can swing around and be used pretty much anywhere you might want it. Um, and again, this can be moved to the outside of the trailer to the mount out there if you want. So to get this thing off, me personally, I like to um, take the top of the table off first. So just loosen this up and pull up and you can remove your table. So that's gonna be just the tabletop. So to get your post off, we've gotta loosen the very bottom one. And you can see this is adjustable for height too. Once you get it loose, it just pulls off and you can set that aside. So now that we've got the table off, let me go ahead and show you how to make this down into a bed. Uh, you've got your bed slats here that do have to be laid out and they are Velcroed. So all you're gonna do is take your Velcro loose. These are gonna sit right here on these tracks in between these two um, triangle shaped pieces here. You mean put one slot on the other side? Huh? Put one slot on the other side. Oh, thank you. Like that. And one slat on each end is gonna go here to help secure this and keep it from moving uh, while you're shifting around in bed. Once you get this into place, all you've gotta do is pull this off from the side and slide it down into the place. Same with the other side. And you've got your bed. And it's that simple. 
Um, so that pretty much covers everything there. Let me show you how to stow the bed, put the table back together, and we'll be done here. So to put this up, just pick your back cushion up, slide the bottom into place. Pick your slats up. Put your Velcro back around them. And these can store right in this cabinet right here under the bench. Like that. And then we're ready to put your table post back together remember this has to go up for the table to slide onto the tabletop so all you got to do is line up your grooves here and lock that down and then we can put your top back on like that and then you can swing this thing around uh, wherever you'd like to have it just remember to make sure this is locked down for travel so it's not back here swinging around banging holes in, uh, into your wall or anything like that. And to do that, we just tighten down on this one and that's gonna keep that nice and stationary for you. Um, this little panel right back here, kind of behind your table, it does have a, a finger pull on it. It's also screwed down. This is gonna be service access for the Air 8, uh, but that's it that's under there. Again, this covers the uh, inside of your tab clamshell. Um, if you have any other questions, give us a call at Princess Craft, and again, I'm Cody.